In just a moment, hear My Son Jeep. First, a few moments to tell you of a special program to be broadcast this Sunday. For nearly three years, NBC newsmen at home and overseas have recorded both the scenes of real battle at the front in Korea and the battle of diplomacy at the United Nations. All the sounds and voices have been edited into a special full-hour program. The result, titled Three Years of Korea, is an important program, a program we all should hear. Listen for Three Years of Korea on this station Sunday. Now stay tuned for My Son Jeep on NBC. Good evening. This is Jeep's father, Dr. Allison, bringing you the weekly news from Grove Falls. This week, I'm afraid our whole script uh, deals with uh, fisticuffs, but please don't leap to the wrong conclusions. I'm not going around sporting a black eye or a bloody nose. I'm still all in one piece, perfectly content to leave the honor of the family in the capable hands of my pint-sized Dempsey, my young exponent of the manly art of self-defense, my son, Jeep. Yes, it's My Son Jeep, the bright and warm-hearted adventures of the Allison family of Grove Falls, transcribed by the National Broadcasting Company and starring Donald Cook as Doc with young Martin Houston as unpredictable, irresistible 10-year-old Jeep Allison. I hope that over the past several months since you've met us, you haven't got the idea that Jeep is a little angel in disguise. Nothing could be further from the facts. He squabbles with his friends and he gets his quota of lumps and bruises. Usually, I maintain a, a hands-off policy. Usually. But not long ago, I was over at the hospital and Barbara Miller, my receptionist, was alone in my office. Come in. Dr. Allison in. Oh, I'm sorry, he's out on his rounds. Would you like to make an appointment? Do I need an appointment to punch him in the nose? What? You heard me. I'm going to punch him in the nose. Well, who are you? I'm the father of Chester Willis, that's who. And who is Chester Willis? My son. What? Will you please tell me what this is all about? He beat up my little Chester, and that's what I'm talking about. Who, the doctor? No, the doctor's son. When will he be back? Who, the doctor's son? No, the doctor. I don't know, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. Oh, is that so? Furthermore, even if there was a fight, I'm sure that Jeep did not start it. He's not the kind of a boy to go around picking fights. Oh, sure, you'd stick up for him. You're his mother. Uh, I am not. Then why are you sticking up for him? Because Jeep is a wonderful boy, and he does not go around picking fights. So is Chester a wonderful boy, and he doesn't go around picking fights either. In that case, maybe there wasn't any fight at all. I suppose Chester gave himself that bloody nose, huh? If he's anything like his father, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> What's all the shouting about, Barbara? I could hear it all the way in the living room. This gentleman claims that Jeep picked on his little boy. Well, that's absolutely ridiculous. My brother doesn't go around picking fights. I suppose my little Chester's a liar? I never heard of your little Chester. But I know G. Anyway, I'd like to punch him in the nose. You wouldn't dare touch my little brother. I'm talking about your father. Land sake, what's all this hollering about? I can hear it all the way out to the kitchen. Who's he? <laughs> he wants to punch father in the nose. Mercy alive over my dead body. Hey, what are you doing here, anyway? He claims Jeep had a fight with his son. And he gave him a bloody nose. Well, if there was a fight, I'll bet you one thing. Your boy must have started it. Jeep, don't go around starting fights. No, oh, sure. You'd stick up for him. You're his grandmother. I am not. I come in here courteously, like any reasonable father would, to ask for a quiet explanation. And what happens? Everybody screams at me. You're all sticking up for this kid without even knowing the facts. Well, I'm going. But you tell his father he hasn't heard the last of this. I'm not going to tell his father anything of the sort. Well, if you don't, I will. But what good will it do? Plenty. The doctor can go over there and punch him in the nose. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Bixby, you're not serious. Well, maybe not really punch him, but at least give him a good talking to. 
The idea of some stranger coming in here and hollering at all of us. Who was that man anyway? I never saw him before. And all I know is he's Chester Willis's father. Oh, hi, everybody. Having a conference? You just missed him, Father. Missed who? He wanted to punch you in the nose. He did? I I'm sure he was just bluffing, Bob. He was? He said Jeep started the whole thing. He did? I didn't trust him the minute I set eyes on him. You didn't? <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Father. Say something. I will. What are you talking about? <laughs> We just told you. Well, you certainly did. Now I know that somebody wants to punch me in the nose, but he's bluffing, and Jeep started it, and whoever it is, you don't trust him. That's right. What's right? Well, this, this may come as a shock to you, but I haven't the vaguest notion what you're talking about. Hi, hey, everybody. What's going on? You having a conference? Land's sake. Jeep, you really were in a fight. Well, how'd you know? Well, look at your face. You want to see the other fella? We know. He's got a bloody nose. Well, golly, how'd you find out? His father came over here. He did. What do you want? He wanted to punch Father in the nose. Well, what for? Now, hey, everybody, now hold it. If I'm going to get punched in the nose, I have every right to know what for and who by. Now, Jeep. Yes, sir? Tell me what happened. I got into a fight. Well, that's one thing I can tell by just looking at you. Who with? Chester Willis. Well, who started it? He did, Pop. Why? Is he a bully? Not anymore, he isn't. <laughs> Dear, what happened? Well, we were in the park playing, and Emily Monroe came over. You know her, Pop. No, I never had the pleasure. Well, she sits in front of me in school. Anyway, old Chester started teasing her, and she wound up crying. So she told him to stop it, and he wouldn't. And I told him to stop it, and he said to shut up or he'd rub my nose in the dirt. Well, then what happened? He rubbed my nose in the dirt. <laughs> so I had to fight him. Who won? I did. Good for you. Only thing puzzles me is how come you stood up for Emily Monroe that way? Ain't she the same one you're always teasing? Sure, but that's different. She sits in front of me. Well, anyway, I never made her cry. I think Jeep did the right thing. When are you going over to see him, Father? See who? That Willis fella. Well, what have I got to see him about? <laughs> well, he threatened you, Father. <laughs> well, he took pretty good care to come around when I wasn't here. Anyway, if he shows up again, I'll know how to handle the situation. You sure would, Pop. I bet you can lick him, too. Yes? You, Dr. Allison? That's right. Come on into my office. Thank you. Now, uh, what seems to be the trouble, Mr... Uh... Well, uh, I'm not a patient, Doctor. My name's Willis, Frank Willis. Oh, you're the one. Now, what do you mean Look, by... Look, Doc, I could save you a lot of trouble. I only came over to apologize. <laughs> I lost my temper yesterday. <laughs> I'm one of those guys who goes along real quiet until something happens, and then, bang, I blow my top. I keep saying to myself, Frank, think before you talk. But I never do. Anyhow, well, I came over to apologize. Well, that takes the wind out of my sails. Beg pardon? I mean, uh, well, okay, I accept your apology. And you won't hold it against me? Not at all, Mr. Willis. Don't suppose you'd care to shake hands? Oh, sure I would. <laughs> uh, by the way, I talked it over with Chester, and uh, he finally admitted it might have been partly his fault. Partly? Yes, he's got a temper, too. I guess he takes after me. <laughs> I uh, hope he didn't hurt your son too much. Her Jeep? <laughs> well, it's the other way around. The way I understand it, uh, Jeep gave your boy a pretty good licking. Not according to what Chester told me. <laughs> well, I don't care what Chester told you. <laughs> my, uh, my boy never lies to me. Besides, he's a, a pretty good scrapper. Oh, he is, is he? Well, my Chester's a pretty good scrapper, too. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's why he got a bloody nose. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Where do you get off trying to... Oh, well, there I go again. Oh, you see, Doc, fly right off the handle. I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. Well, I better be getting on home. Well, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. It's always nice to meet someone who'll admit he's in the wrong. Who's in the wrong? Well, you are. You admitted you lost your temper. That doesn't mean I was in the wrong. The trouble with you is that I... Uh, never fails, Doc. I can't learn to keep my big mouth shut. You must think I'm an awful fool. <laughs> well. Well? Oh, uh, there's something else I want to mention, Doc. Yes? 
You know how a kid looks up to his father. Sure. And how he thinks his old man can lick anybody else in the world. <laughs> We've all had that experience. Yes, yes. Well, uh, anyway, Chester thinks I came over here to beat you up. <laughs> what? Well, why on earth should he think that? Well, I... Well, I might have said something. Such as what? By this time, you know me and my temper. I probably said something silly like, well, I'd teach you to keep your kid in line after this. So Chester thinks I came over to beat you up. Well, you'll just have to tell Chester the truth, that you came over to apologize. Well, I couldn't do that. He wouldn't look up to me anymore. Oh. So uh, wouldn't it be okay with you if I tell Chester that we had a fight and I won? <laughs> it would not. Oh, come on, Doc. Absolutely not. I've got a son, too. If you tell your son we fought and you won, and he tells my son, but I'll tell you what we could do. What? Tell him the truth. You know, we talked it over and shook hands. Out of the question. I'll tell you what, it, it sounds a little childish, but I, I'll go this far. We had a fight, and it ended in a draw. Now, how does that sound? Say, that's pretty good, yes. All right, Doc, I'll settle for that. Sir, pretty smart of you to think of that. Of course, uh, you know you're really getting the best of it. What do you mean? Well, uh, the business of our fight ending in a draw. <laughs> if it ever came right down to it, I think I could take you. <laughs> well, so long, Doc. So he could take me, could he? I'm not so sure of that. <laughs> Oh, Jeep, you ain't hardly touched your spinach. Oh, I always leave it for the last. Why, you hope it'll disappear? <laughs> it's food like spinach that makes you grow big and strong, honey. I know all that. But why can't stuff that's good for you taste like stuff that you like? Well, that's a good question, but I don't know the answer. Well, it's perfectly obvious, Father. If Jeep thought spinach wasn't good for him, he'd probably love it. Listen to her. I like string beans, don't I, Peggy Allison? And they're good for me. Hey, got any string beans, Mrs. Bixby? Be glad to eat some of them. <laughs> now, that'll be enough of that. Eat your spinach. Do I have to, Pop? Well, you heard, Barbara. Spinach makes you strong. You need all the strength you can get if you're going to keep on getting into fights. Oh, I don't keep on getting in fights. Hardly ever have one. No, but when you do, it's a beaut. <laughs> you know, come to think of it, I'm not a bit surprised that that Willis man never came back. Uh, <clears throat> he did. He did? When? This afternoon. Well, come on. What happened? I'd uh, rather not discuss it. Why? Did he punch you in the nose? He did not. Well, for goodness sake, Father, what happened? Did you punch him in the nose, Pop? Let's drop the subject. You can't leave us hanging this way. Finish the story. Well, he, he came over. And that much we know already. Well, then uh, he left. Father... <laughs> He didn't just walk in and then walk out. What happened? Well, not very much. Well, what? Well, we, we, oh, well, if you must know, there was a, a slight altercation. What's that mean? It means a fight, I think. Oh, land sakes, Doctor, are you serious? But there isn't a mark on you. Of course not. It's because Pop's a good boxer, aren't you, Pop? Are you, Bob? Well, I boxed a bit in high school. Well, that was a long time ago. Wasn't your footwork a little rusty? <clears throat> I am not so decrepit that I can't still take care of myself, Miss Bixby. Sure you can, Pop. Bet you really showed that Mr. Willis. If I'm not too inquisitive, Bob, who won? Nobody. What? It was a draw. How do you know? Did you have a referee? <laughs> we, we did not have a referee, and we will now drop the whole thing. Gee whiz. What's the matter with you? I thought you could lick anybody, and it was only a draw. Frankly, I'm disappointed, too. Yeah, me too, a little. Well, what kind of a bloodthirsty family is this? In case you've forgotten, I I'm a doctor, not a prize fighter. But the other man's not a prize fighter either, Pop. Are you sure you didn't win, even by just a little bit? All right, if it'll make you any happier, I beat him to a pulp. Oh, boy, I knew it. Nobody can lick my Pop. <laughs> Dad. Oh, what 
didn't I say? I told him you could lick his son the best day he ever saw. What did he say? Oh, he started to give me an argument, so I told him I could lick him the best day he ever saw, too. <laughs> oh, boy, then you socked him, huh, Dad? Huh? Well, didn't you? Oh, sure, sure, I uh, socked him. <laughs> and then he socked you back. Who's making up this story? <laughs> I mean, who's telling it? You are, Dad. Then don't say he socked me. I was a pretty fair boxer in high school. I, uh, I jabbed him with a left, crossed over a right to the button, gave him the old one-two to the bread basket. By that time, he'd had enough. Gee, you're not a scratch on you, Dad. <laughs> he never laid a finger on me. Then what did you do? I apologized. I mean, he apologized. Boy, wait till I tell that Jeep Allison. Uh, well, you better not say anything about this, Chester. Why not? You beat up his dad, didn't you? Yes, but he thinks the fight ended in a draw. How could he? You said he never laid a finger on you. I know, but he doesn't know much about boxing. But gosh, if I can't tell Jeep, what was the use of your fighting in the first place? If you do tell him, I might really get into a fight. I mean, get into another fight. Oh, Dad. I don't want to hear any more out of you now, Chester. Remember, not a word about this to anybody. Barbara, we oh. made a date to go to the movies tonight, didn't we? Sure, why? Well, uh, what's playing? I don't like going just to be going. Let's find out what's playing. No sooner said than done. Operator, 2350, oh, please. Thank you. If the picture doesn't sound too good, let's go for a drive instead. Fine with me, Bob. Hello, Majestic? What's playing tonight, please? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, what's playing? The big fight. <laughs> <laughs> what's the other picture? I'll never believe you. <laughs> we'll go for a drive. <laughs> That first picture must be about fighting. Wouldn't you enjoy that? There's been enough talk around this house about fighting without going to see a picture about it. Oh. Tell me something, Bob, in strict confidence, of course. What really happened when Mr. Willis came to see you? Nothing. As a matter of fact, he apologized for losing his temper. And that's all? That's every bit of it. Somehow I'm not a bit surprised. I couldn't picture you getting into a brawl. Well, no, but if I were forced into a corner, I assure you I could give a good account of myself. I'm sure you could, Bob. But you're much too nice a guy to use brute strength to win a point. Well, thank you, Barbara. You're a very good judge of character. Well, lucky for you, Jeep isn't. Why did you make up that story about fighting to a draw? Oh, that was Willis doing, not mine. He wanted to make his son happy, but he wanted to tell him that he'd beat me up. I wouldn't stand for that. Why should I make Jeep unhappy? So we settled for a draw. Mm-hmm. And then you got carried away and told Jeep that you won. Well, I didn't get carried away. He backed me into a corner and I had to pacify him. <laughs> well, you succeeded. As far as Jeep's concerned, you're the champion of Grove Falls. Well, as long as I don't have to defend the title, what's the harm? Hi, Pop. Hi, Barbara. Jeep, how did you get that black eye? Oh, I didn't. Again? I've never known you to be so pugnacious before. Huh? Who, who was it this time? Chester Willis. Are you making a career of fighting this one boy? Uh, what am I supposed to do when he calls me a liar? And dares me to knock a chip off his shoulder, walk away? But why did he call you a liar, Jeep? Because he started bragging about how his father beat Pop up. What? He did no such thing. That's what I told him, Pop. Said you won. I didn't. You, you told him that? Well, not exactly. Well, thank goodness for small favors. I told him you beat his father to a pulp. What? <laughs> well, isn't that what you said? Your chickens come home to roost, Bob. What chickens? Never mind what chickens. You, <laughs> you and I are going over to see Mr. Willis. Gee, you going to beat him to a pulp again, Pop? Nobody is going to beat anybody. It is high time the Allisons and the Willises negotiated a peace treaty. <laughs> Chester. Yes, Dad? Have you got another bloody nose? Uh-huh. Who have you been fighting with this time? Jeep Allison. Again? Now, son, you've got to either stop fighting altogether or find somebody you can lick. <laughs> now, who started it? You or him? I don't know. I just told him you could lick his father any day in the week. And I could, too. 
Sure, and I said that when you went over there the other day, you did lick him. Chester, uh, I told you never to mention that outside the house. Gosh, Dad, what am I supposed to do when Jeep says his father beat you up? Did he say that? He said his father told him he beat you to a pulp. Oh, he did, did he? Uh, how do you like that? We make a bargain. We shake hands on it. And the minute my back's turned, he breaks his word. Why, the dirty double-crosser. What was the bargain about, Dad? Mm, never mind. It doesn't concern you. I can't get over it. Double-crossed by a man I was prepared to trust. Come on, Chester. Where are we going? Over to see Allison and his son. What for? To straighten this whole thing out. And when I get through with him, it'll be a cold day in July before he double-crosses me again. Now, remember, Jeep, when we get over there, you let me do the talking. Okay with me, Pop. If there's one thing I pride myself on, it's being able to take a tangled situation like this and straighten it out with a few well-chosen words. Like what? I'll think of something when we get there. Well, if you're not going to think up some words until we get there, how can they be well-chosen? <laughs> it's just a manner of speaking, G. Oh, like when you say everybody ought to get closer to nature, only you never do. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Pop, look who just turned the corner. Chester and his father. Oh, yeah. Well, they certainly seem to be in a hurry. Hello, Willis. Hello, Doc. Where are you headed for? Uh, your place. Where are you headed for? Your place. Um, I, uh, uh the, uh, kids had another fight. Yeah, I know. That was what I was on my way to see you about. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> kind of warm today, isn't it? Yes, it is, rather. Gee whiz, did we come all the way over here just to talk about weather? Yeah, come on, Dad. I thought you were going to tell him off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were going to tell me off? What about? Oh, uh, nothing much, Doc. It was that bargain we made. You know, uh, the one that you double-crossed me on? I double-crossed you? Sure. You told the kid you beat me to a pulp. Well, what of it? You double-crossed me, too. That's no excuse, Doc. You double-crossed me without knowing I'd already double-crossed you. <laughs> you know what they're talking about, Chester. Nope, do you? Now, listen, Mr. Willis, this whole ridiculous situation is your doing. Now, whose idea was it to tell the children that you and I had a, uh, <clears throat> a jeep? Yes, Pop? Would you mind walking down to the corner a minute? Uh, Mr. Willis and I want to talk this over in private. Uh, that's a good idea, Doc. Chester, go with Jeep. Come on, Chester. Now, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. But <clears throat> the whole idea of saying you and I had a fight was yours. Well, whose idea was it to say we fought to a draw? It was mine, and that's my whole point. I suggested it merely as a compromise, and then what happened? You didn't stick to it. Neither did you. Only because Jeep backed me into a corner. Well, Chester backed me into a corner, too. You know what I like to do? Tell him the truth. Should have done it to begin with. Oh, can't do that, Doc. Why not? Well, how'd it look having to admit to Chester we just talked a little and shook hands? And how'd you look to your boy? Now, my telling the truth means a whole lot more to Jeep than a story about how I can lick... No. No, you're right. I can't backtrack now. You're darn right, Doc. We got to stop those two kids from fighting every five minutes. But at the same time, we got to keep from looking like fools ourselves. So let's both of us tell the same story to each one of our kids. You know what, Chester? Something's fishy. It's not like Pop to keep secrets from me. Except when they're the kind I got to leave the room for. Maybe this is that kind of a secret. How could it be? They're talking about that fight they had. Grown-ups are funny, aren't they, Jeep? Yeah. They have a little fight, and then they talk about it forever. You and me, we have a fight, and it's over. We forget about it. Till the next one. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? I wouldn't be surprised if your pop and mine never had a fight. You know something? Neither would I. All that talk about bargains and double crossing. Yeah, sure, that's it. They never had a fight at all. They just made a bargain to say they would. Yeah, I'll bet neither one of them can fight their way out of a paper bag. Yeah. <laughs> Guess they're just too old. My father's almost 40. Look at him, talking away, trying to figure out a story for us. What do you think it's going to be, Jeep? Oh, probably the old one about fighting to a draw. 
And listen, Chester, whatever you do, don't let on we don't believe him. Of course not. I wouldn't want to hurt my dad's feelings. Neither would I. Oh, boys, would you come over here a minute? Remember, Chester, don't let on. Well, fellas, uh, Mr. Willis and I have something to tell you. Go on, Willis. Yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, kids, um, uh, the doc and I decided to tell you the truth. There's no sense in kidding you. We had a little fight, and then both of us decided to brag a little bit. Well, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> we fought to a draw. <laughs> right, Doc? That's correct. Is that all, Pop? Yes. Then let's you and me go over to the clubhouse and play, Chester. And I'll see you later, Pop. So long, Dad! Oh, uh, look at him go, Doc. Happy as larks. <laughs> sure a relief, isn't it? Yes, not a question, not a doubt in their minds. They simply swallow, or I mean they believe every word. As wonderful the faith boys have in their fathers. Everybody. Our Boy Scout message tonight is for all you fellas who are 14 or older. And here to tell you about it is a representative of the local Boy Scout Council. Hello, Jeep. I'm Explorer Scout Matthew Messer of Troop 54 in Brooklyn. Guess you want to remind all the Explorer Scouts about the Philmont Scout Ranch, don't you, Matt? I sure do. It's the greatest place in the world for a Scout's vacation. You can come for a week or for a whole month, and you'll have 130,000 acres to play around in. There'll be camping trips and horseback riding. And everybody will live out in the open, just the way the pioneers did. It's real easy to make reservations. That's right, Jeep. All you have to do is give your local council a $5 deposit, and they'll make all the arrangements for you. And you better do it right now, fellas. Just tell your local council you want to go to Philmont Scout Ranch out in Cimarron, New Mexico. It'll be the greatest vacation you ever had. My Son Jeep was created and written by Walter Black and William Mendrick and directed by Dan Sutter. Leona Powers is heard as Mrs. Bixby, Lynn Allen plays Barbara Miller, and Joan Laser plays Peggy with Frank Behrens and Arthur Cassell. Featured as 10-year-old Jeep is radio's brightest newcomer, young Martin Houston. And starring in the role of Doc is Broadway's top comedian and one of America's most versatile performers, Donald Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight marks the last Sunday performance of My Son Jeep. Beginning Thursday, June 25th, and every Thursday thereafter, My Son Jeep will be brought to you at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Check your local newspaper for the exact time of My Son Jeep in your vicinity. This is Fred Collins, then, inviting you to be back with us on Thursday, June 25th, for the next transcribed visit with America's favorite family, the Allisons of Grove Falls and radio's number one situation comedy, My Son Jeep. Tonight, it's the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show on NBC.